<sighs> hey, this is Nikki Lane, and you're listening to WNXP.
gonna have to go off in my imagination and imagine you guys are cheering me on in your car or in your living room or... I mean, the people here are just ecstatic in this room. They just have to be silent because we're recording. Uh, it's good to see you, my name, or sing to you, Nikki, N Nikki Lane here, <laughs> live in Nashville, Tennessee. I brought my band in from Texas and Michigan and California, and we're going to head off to the 4th of July weekend, which may or may not be after this, and I may have, what did I just do? Well, we'll never know. But, uh, but I'm happy to he be here with you today singing all new songs from my new record, which is called Denim and Diamonds. It's coming out at the end of September, and uh, I wrote a lot of songs uh, about being myself, but I didn't think about how I got here, so I started writing a record about, about maybe the past a little bit, and uh, here it is, still the same in the present. Uh, this one's one of my favorites from the new record. It's called Born Tough. I'm born to 
trying to make it all on your own. Well, just remember what Cher says, Mom, I am a rich man. I ain't scared to go it all alone. Cause I can do whatever I want All by my lungs If that's a problem Well you can't say Cause I'm going my way Living and dead Knocking by my own death Doing the devil Knocking by my own death Doing the devil Knocking by my own death Death, death Alright, it's Celia here in the Sonic Cathedral at WNXP with friend and neighbor back in town before you're hitting the road again. Nikki no, Lane. leaving. Welcome. Nice. Welcome to, to the Sonic Cathedral. This is your first time in here, right? I know. It's yeah. so cozy. Like we you. got lavender lighting. It's it's gorgeous it's on you. It's good for us, too. And your band sounded great. I loved hearing new songs from Denim and Diamonds. It's out in September. Yep. Which you did the heavy lifting for me, telling all the essential ingredients of I don't even mean to just be a plug, plug. You're, you're plug, on it. We'll plug. get you on our radio station. <laughs> but I am excited about this album. We've been playing uh, First High, yeah. which is, of course, all about the like titillation of first times of things. Uh -huh. um, tell me about a recent first, maybe pandemic era since your last record, or maybe just like this week. <laughs> that's my hardball that you said I had one. I know. I'm like, but that's too deep. I'm like, what, what have I done for the first time at 38 years old after this pandemic? I mean, I guess like there's been a lot of like life uh, – Se seizing the moment mm -hmm. right after coming back so I've been abandoned it's not really the first time but I've been abandoning all sorts of uh I don't care anymore mm -hmm. like I did I, I I'm very thoughtful so I do care right but I've I've recently hit this stride of like especially with this record like as I said when I announced it I, did, I was like I fact checked that it was okay to say that I didn't care if you like it because obviously I I rely on you guys liking the song. <laughs> but I've hit this new moment where I didn't mean to go five years without a record. And I didn't mean to uh, think I was going to quit. You know, I didn't mean to, like, trick myself into, like, liking something so much that now it doesn't matter to me what happens. Mm -hmm. So uh, even though I've had deadlines, I've been vacationing and uh, skinny dipping in the, in the light. It was supposed to be an after dark shoot uh, if you saw v a first high. You know, like, just, just saying yes to things where I normally like to be in control. I've, I've stopped. I just don't care. I just, it, it's, it's, everything's really so crazy out there that I'm like, it's just fine. It's just fine. It's fine. Everything I'm doing is just fine. So it, it sounds like this is a recent movement, but did this come out in the music too? Are these songs about, you said you were looking backwards. And, and it's like, and it's interesting, right? Because I, I feel like I made a record when I first started playing music. I made a record, you know, we were just talking about Caitlin Rose and like her first record was like, you know what I mean? It's like your first record encompasses a lot of past, right? Mm -hmm. But it's you becoming like that character, if, in my opinion, right? So then it's like, I made records about the active, you know, mm -hmm. like I was like, I got to a stride where I was like, what do you want? You want me to still write about the van? We're still in it. Like, we could, you know what I mean? But Highway Queen, like, I think Man we covered that. You know what I mean? Like, I can't say Econoline anymore, you know? Uh, and uh, I needed, like, new subject matter. And I think that in that, I started experiencing things again and, like, stopped mm. the grind. I had to because of the pandemic. But also I allowed myself to because I thought I was taking a break or something, right? And then in turn, I started looking at how I got here. You know what I mean? Like, as you sort out where, or what you're doing and how you are, like, you have to figure out why you know and those that's what dug up these songs so so there's there's sweet ones where i was trying to write a love song and that's my hardest subject matter because people are just not worthy of <laughs> that kind of adoration <laughs> sometimes they're just debaucherous behavior uh deplorable but uh uh i wrote a song about my grandparents and mm -hmm. their love you know i started just looking at some of the at the things i said i spent most of my life complaining about my ex-husband and complaining about my hometown and really i like both of them a lot it <laughs> was just like a, i'm a comedian to some degree I had, someone had to be the victim <laughs> so, <laughs> like, so wait did the stuff just come forth you're like oh yeah I, i'm thinking about sweet things my grandparents or i'm thinking about the first time and like how great that i mean <sighs> how did you compose these songs? I'll throw you like a couple of them in the sense that like for starters like what was so exciting was I didn't want to make a record so like George Fontaine from the label was like how do you make a record? Was, like find me a manager and then he found me a manager and the manager was like are you going to make a record? Was, like find me a producer and then you know Kim Bowie at the label was like are you going to write with him? I was like no one person you know and she sent me to Gabe Simon so it was like feeling like I was like bucking back that was like even how I got in the door with all these people and then you know, once I had Josh's attention to make the record, I was like, oh, I want to make a rock. I can, well, I'm not, we're not going to make a country a record. I mean, he could do that. But so I started leaning into what the subject matter was. But like, like, it's things like the, the end er, the ender of this record is called Chamayo. And it's mm -hmm. a two part. A Chamayo is a very expensive jacket. And Gabe had sent me a track and he said, 
uh, Chamayo, and then it's an instrumental, and it sounds like a war song. And I was like, like a battle song. Like, and I'm like, what is this? And he's like, well, I don't know what a Chamayo is, but every time you talk about it, you get really upset. And it's because a Chamayo has been used against me in my personal life. A girl that was working for me stole it from my house, along with a hundred other things. So this is and a I've waited two experience. years to be able to talk about this in the form of this song, where I'm just like, oh, girl, I'm coming for my Chamayo. You know? <laughs> and so I like it just, it just like triggers that. stuff, you know? L good enough, uh, the song about my grandparents, I was trying to write a love song about my hopes, you know, mm -hmm. and my, uh, my hopes of writing vows or speaking vows, and I, and I had to turn to where that source was, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So so I think that was it. I um, First high I wanted, I, I joked, I said, I want to be Sheryl Crow, you know, like as soon as possible. Like, <laughs> let's let's write that today. And, uh, and I just wanted, I said, if I can get as high as the first time I ever did, I'm coming over. And I went over there, and I was definitely not high as the first time. But, <laughs> but you know, it's just like, <laughs> you just kind of, I challenged myself to write these songs. Whereas I think for years, they just came. Uh. And these ones were like, okay, maybe you should touch on that a little bit less. Like, you know, I feel like uh, a, a lot of writers spend a lot of time hiding what they mm -hmm. were trying to say, which is what good writing is, right? But there's some vulnerability there, too, that I wanted to have, and then I guess I had it, and that's why I don't care anymore. I love Because I'm like, now you know everything. <laughs> like, you know, like. You're not, and all you're seeing yeah. everything. And, and it's just one radio Take. episode. You were just trying to come <laughs> light listen, but here we are. <laughs> well, but you, you mentioned Josh by name, but um, so you've been working with the Queens of the Stone Age guys, so this yeah. is a rock record. Yeah, I mean, it's like rock leaning, right? But yeah. then I'm like, Dan Arbach made the record a couple records ago, and Johnny's not even inherently country. I feel like it's always been rock inspired and there's still I still sing like a redneck so you know <laughs> but what, how is it different this time working with I Josh? think like his curation like the fact that he was really excited but the first thing he asked was like who are you gonna bring so I brought Matt Penn my pedal steel player because he wanted me to make sure I felt like on the lev with them like and like and I do I say sometimes I feel outnumbered it's not it's just that I know the last least vocabulary but then he started pulling together we had the Arctic Monkeys drummer but it was really important to him he wanted Carla Azar mm -hmm. who was from Auto Lux and then also had played in Jack White's band but like a feminine energy in the room was like a vibe so we had both of them in every day so we have double drums from them on Black Widow just because they were showing up it we were in COVID and in LA it was really nuts so we had created the bubble and the bubble was who we were so um, Mikey Schumann uh, Mikey Shoes from Queens of the Stone Age, the bass player played. We had Elaine Johannes. And I don't have any like special guests on the record, but like in the studio, I had all my girlfriends visiting, you know, and it just, we needed that at that time. Everybody did. So it's one of those things we're all talking about it as like this really special moment, which it was. And I, but I think a lot of that is to do with like, you started to experience things on a different level once it was kind of removed from you, you taken away. And so it was really special. I think that the rock leaning is just inherently what he does. I love writing harmonies mm -hmm. and singing harmonies to like songs other people wrote. But that's, I think, also what kind of makes it sound like an Americana record, you know, when I layer it up. So he would take away some of that <laughs> and obviously like give me the opportunity to fight back. But I was like, oh, that does sound more just even the single vocal. And then I can still sing like annoyingly with all the harmonies in my car, you know, to myself. <laughs> but but I learned in some of that sparseness that there was like, you know, an opportunity to hear me, which is, again, like maybe what I had been working to hide for a long time. So, right. So big psychology game over the last couple of <laughs> years here. And, and yeah, but I but I but I like all the songs and I like making records again and I'm already like booking you know my plans to make a country record you know I love like, it you're back baby I, yeah I just like needed to quit for pretend I love I love <laughs> the myself. idea that when you hear these songs now on the full album and other people are experiencing them for the first time little by little but the full album in September you're taking back to these times in your past but also it's a time capsule of COVID recording it in COVID with mm -hmm. that bubble of people mm -hmm. right so it's the songs look back but you're also taken back to the studio in this like precious, weird yeah. moment. In and history. because of the long lull, like I didn't wear it out. I feel like mm -hmm. when you're in the grind, like I'm kind of sick of it by the time it comes out. And like I ran over to the house yesterday because I have to sign 1,500 inserts, you know, okay, whatever, that's insane. But that's I right. went over to look at them last night and I, like, I still have that like, you know, that novelty of like, wow, like there it is like you know and that's fun i you need to get that back sometimes i think in all aspects of life but i'm gonna ride that out for a little bit well we love that you're back with this record we love you're touring this summer i know there's a lot of festival dates you have and then you're back here close by at the caverns uh -huh. right in september so which is be gonna be show. great i mean spiritualized in the caverns sounds like 
but <laughs> sounds like a spiritual experience. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, thanks for bringing so much great energy here, and we'll be playing more of the music, and then you'll have to swing back through. Yeah, invite me back. I yeah, next I time, Nabe. Okay. okay, we'll try blue lights next time. Okay, yeah. Okay. You pick your color. Good okay. to meet you. Nice to see you. <laughs>